Hi, this is David Gilmore, and welcome to my podcast. In June 2019, I will be auctioning more than 120 of my guitars for charity. This might be the most important collection of rock instruments ever. After all, in the end, uh, tools of the trade. It's a guitar. <laughs> and on this podcast, discover the untold stories around three of them. This one, I'll get it down very carefully. Sounds nice. They're all different. They're my friends. They've been very good to me. And if you pick one up and it feels and sounds great, there's some sort of strange magic that can happen. Anyway. This is Three Different Ones, a David Gilmore podcast. Episode two. You've always had a love for acoustic music, for folk music yeah. and for early blues. That's yeah. So actually, acoustic mm. guitars, yeah. was the love for that there before you fell in love with the electric guitars? Um, well, you know, most people are going to start off on an acoustic guitar. I started off on a nylon strung acoustic guitar um, and then graduated to a, an arch top guitar with F holes. Uh, but I've always um, my my background of in music is very very mixed, very broad. You know, I'm a jack of all trades. Um, I loved acoustic music. I love folk music. I loved um, acoustic uh, blues music. Uh, Lead Belly was a favourite of mine. Lead Belly had a twelve string. I had a twelve string when I was a teenager, about nineteen for a while. I've, racked my memory to try and remember what happens to these guitars that what that I had at that time and I in some cases you know I am I can only imagine that when I wanted to get another guitar I had to sell that one or chop it in on that one to raise the funds so I don't know what happened. anyway I had a 12 string back then and I did uh, very much like lead bellies playing and um, a guy called Eric Darling I was very keen on who who played twelve string. I learned quite a bit of stuff from him. So tell me about these two Martins. So the two Martins, um, this one, which as you can see, you in Radio Land, I'll get it down very carefully. <laughs> I bought this one from a friend in England. Don't know why he wanted to sell it, but I wanted a twelve string, and I didn't have one at that time, so I got this one. Sounds nice. Anyway, so that <laughs> fell out of this guitar in the control room of number three at Abbey Road in 75. The people around me picked up on it and, um, and it so evolved, wish you were here. Because, yeah, the acoustic 
I mean, I think it's possible to say the acoustic sound on Wish You Were Here may be some of the most beautifully recorded and lovely sounding acoustic guitar playing ever committed to tape. Yeah. string music see that's the sort of thing you can do on a troll string so yeah the start of wish you were here has got there's we digressed it? there's yeah. a bit of mythology around mm. various cables being taken out of studios and run into cars and run back again and mm. put through car radios what's the because it is it's new, the start of that track, yeah. the sound of that guitar the sound of that um the, uh, the track was supposed to be this imitating the sound of a car a, a radio, a, a, a music being played coming out of a radio, I suppose, supposedly into someone's bed sitting room, bed sitting room or something, and the, the guy in the bed sitting room then joins and starts playing those melody lines over the top. Um, and no, we we did actually run a microphone out into my car in the car park at the front of Abbey Road, and I just twiddled with the dial and um you know we recorded some stuff of the twiddling with the dial and the changing of stations um and used a bit of it on on wish you were here these strange things that happen you know that um this it's the weirdest synchronicity that you get you know those strange voices saying weird things you know and then moving to a different bit we did it again on um on the wall album, exactly the same thing. Surprise, surprise, surprise. It's just, these things are just, you know you're going to get something fantastic. Nowadays, of course, I don't, any, you, nowadays you have to press a button and you change channels between stations and you're going to get some shit. But I, and, I don't, think it, don't quite think it would work these days. But in those days, you, you know, you just turn the thing and it gradually went from one... It pull into the next one, and anyway, yeah, one of the things we used to do, we used to play with. Is it true that that guitar was stolen, but then returned back to you? Is this yeah. right? Um, I lived out in the countryside somewhere, and I had a little studio room, um, and my brother had a band, and he was in there working, rehearsing with his band quite a bit and these guitars were in that studio room and it was locked and everything and one night it got broken into and some guitars went um and it turned out to be one of the musicians who was in my brother's band at the time had, had um, a temporary musician <laughs> very temporary in this case um had had half inched them and had taken them off, and uh, they were put into a studio in Surrey, owned by someone grey. People know about this studio. So, uh, anyway, um, he recognised the guitar, I think, and and called us up. I think and said, "I got a sneaking suspicion there are some guitars here that might not be belong to the person who brought them here." Um, and we got most of them back. A couple that I never got back. One of the which, which was a a three pickup black Les Paul with humbuckers on it, which um, I'd loved ever seeing it on a cover of a Smokey Robinson and the Miracles record, um, and a Gibson TV model, Les Paul TV model, little blonde thing with double cutaways. That I didn't get back either. They're, st they're potentially still being played by someone yeah, to this day. Yeah, they probably are. That's quite nice. I mean, I got I got another Gibson Les Paul uh, three pickup black one and another TV model. I think they're both in this sale. Heaven 
sent the promised land Looks alright from where I stand Cause I'm the man on the outside looking in Who do you think who do you think is going to buy these guitars? Um, what, really? Hmm, really? No. Well, yeah, there's, uh, there's, there are... I hope, I hope someone who genuinely wants to play them and have some fun with them and maybe create something with them is going to buy them. I don't really believe that was going to happen. Well, this is the thing. There is that... I. These things should be looked after because they're important. Yeah, the the, the music that was mm. written on them, and you can say this about mm. many famous guitars. Yeah. You know, and it's good. They should be looked after. They should be looked after. They should be played, and and they should be passed on at the appropriate moment, which is now for me. In terms of, yeah, I mean, how how would you feel about someone? Because this is the trade off. It's mm. like someone is. Oh, I I, I will be prepared to spend a quarter of a million dollars on one of these guitars. I mean, I'll have it in a glass case, mm. but your charity will get $250,000. No. I guess you've just got to be happy that the charity are going to do well. Then the, the tools of the trade part of my character comes back into play, and I think, what, what the hell? <laughs> it's a guitar. Have you had many people inquiring, maybe, you know, friends or fellow uh, collectors going, could you, how much, tell me a bit more about that instrument? Well, I've told people about the instruments. I haven't had people inquiring with a, with a view to buying anything, really. But yeah. the, the sort of people I know aren't the ones who are going to be the people who want to buy these things. Is it Paul Allen, the Microsoft guy who's... Just died. Tragic. So disappointed. For the sale. <laughs> <laughs> Um, in terms of the charities uh, or how you've chosen to distribute mm. the proceeds from this? Well, I have a charitable foundation that I have had for many, many years. And we um, look at a broad sphere of charitable things. And we choose every year what we're going to put that money towards. Um Right now in the world, there's no shortage of need for charitable donations. And um, so all this money will be going towards things that we have decided to work on. Um, you know, mostly in the grand global sphere, um, some more, more local to, to our lives here in England. But um, we try to get a good balance, but uh, this will... This will be doing an enormous amount of good for an enormous amount of people where it is really needed. Yeah, you've uh, done homeless charities. Yeah. Has been one of the... Uh, yeah, crisis. Yeah. And there's, there is... And you'll have to correct me if you're wrong, because there's another myth about um, you owning a place in Primrose Hill. And I believe... Did you sell that for... It was in Maida Vale. Maida Vale, okay. Uh, on the canal in Little Venice. Um, yeah, I sold that uh, for crisis. Because the rumours were that the that the neighbours were enormously irritated by this and you were like, and it's my house, or do I want? Is this true? I don't think anyone was <laughs> annoyed by it. Um, you know, um, yeah, I, I mean, it's, it, it was only the money that, that went to uh, uh, the, the cause. It was bought, you know, it's back, back into the marketplace. It's not... Like the, it aff affected the building in any way. <laughs> I hope Charles Spencer was very happy there. And the idea is to exhibit the guitars, and then they're going to tour, so you don't have to. Yeah, <laughs> you can. You're sending them around the world. Mm -hmm. That's what. Uh, yeah, Chris is going to show them in various cities, so that people can go and have a look and do their stuff. They know their business. Because this is. Probably, well, this is maybe the biggest guitar auction, maybe the most significant guitar auction that's ever taken place. Have Christie mm. said that? Um, no, they haven't said that. I mean, Eric's two guitar sales were both pretty significant, I think, weren't they? Um, and he, he sold off some pretty major stuff, and they did raise quite a lot, I believe, for his, um, his um, drug dependency charity in Antigua. 
and it's, it sounds crass talking about money, but then again, the money's going to charity. So, mm. hey, uh, how much do you think the black strat we were talking about in the last episode, how much do you think that will raise? I think the reserve is £150,000. I honestly have not got any idea. Um, I hope they do nicely. That was episode two of Three Different Ones, a David Gilmore podcast. Subscribe now to hear the final episode or go back and hear the first episode if you missed it. If you want to find out more about the David Gilmore Guitar Auction, just go to davidgilmore.com. This has been a Cup and Nuzzle production.